Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> no. Time for bladder check. Check. So it's a show? It's a lifestyle. It's a religion. <laughs> My emotions! My emotions! I'm still French. Ouais, c'est pas faux. I'm a woman, Mary. I can be as contrary as I choose. Non, moi je crois qu'il faut que vous arrêtiez d'essayer de dire des trucs. Hello, hi, I'm Laura. I'm gonna watch My Hero Academia season 5, episode 3. Today, this morning, I already watched episode 2. If you want to see my reaction video about it, I'm gonna put the link into the eye. I'm gonna put the link also for the playlist that I made for My Hero Academia. In case you don't know it, I've been watching My Hero Academia. I watched all of the four first seasons, the two movies, three OVAs. I know that I still have one movie to watch and some OVAs to discover, but I think that I'm gonna do that after the season 5. For what I understood, you know, for what I searched, the order to watch everything, I think that it's more something like that. No matter what, I'm glad to be there for the episode 3. The last episode that I watched this morning was really cool. It was a big one. Like, I had the impression to have only scenes which were really important, really meaningful, even if it wasn't really big action scenes with big fights and stuff like that. Still, everything was really important for, in fact, the main narrative arcs that we're gonna have during this season. It was almost like first episode, we're gonna make a reminder about everything that you're supposed to know about these students and all of their quirks. Second episode, we're gonna present you all of the main narrative arcs of the season, meaning that we're gonna have a big one about Ox, who is a tabernacle giant, you know, who is talking with Dabi, who is giving information to Dabi, who is helping the League of Villains. But in fact, our guys, I mean, the right side knows it. Not everyone knows it, and that can be an issue at some point, I think. Like, if someone is discovering that he's talking with the League of Villains and that person doesn't know that in fact he's a double agent, it can be really bad for Ox. And I'm also afraid of him maybe at some point switching. That's really the main danger with having a double agent who is giving information to both sides who is playing, who was hired by one side, but maybe at some point he can switch and play really for the other side. Ah, that's a real danger! So I think that all of that, all of the double agent situation, it's gonna be one of the main narrative arcs of the season, like Andover. All of the redemption narrative arc of Andover, that's gonna be a big thing. We began stuff about him during the previous season, with the fact that he wants to change, he's saying it, but is he really doing stuff for changing? Was he punished for all of what he did before? Did he apologize to the persons that he, he hurt? No. And you know that for me, that's really the three rules that I need to give that redemption card to someone. During the previous episode, it was Something, you know, to have him talking with his kids, but at the same time I had the impression that this entire scene was talking about the three rules that I just mentioned. He apologized to his daughter, but not to the two other ones. One told him, okay, you want to change, you're saying it, but in fact you're not doing it. What are you for us like? What are you changing for us? Are you more present for us? Are you better father for us? In fact, no. And Shoto told him something like, okay, you're an amazing hero and now everyone is changing his mind about you about that. But us, we're not gonna change our mind about you just like that. So, see? Two things already, two of my rules already mentioned. And the third one about being punished for what he did before. I think that the fact that they are rejecting him and they are not gonna open their arms just like that because suddenly he's deciding to change, that's gonna hurt him a little and that can be great also for his ego. But I think also that all of the things with his car, his new car, which looks a lot like the one that Shoto has, clearly it's symbolic, clearly it's to say that what Shoto suffered, he's suffering it right now. Is it gonna be enough? I don't know, but I'm... I see. I see what they are doing right there, the writers. I appreciate it, the symbolic of that. I appreciate it. The third main narrative arc that we're gonna have during this season 
it's about the quirks you know all for one and one for all the fact that we had Deku's dream like that with seeing the ones who had his quirk before him with also understanding how his quirk was created the fact that the master created it for his brother because he loved him I'm not gonna deny that aspect like I could be really just like okay he wanted to have him under his control to have him following him blindly and also that's why he did it no that was not just for that like okay his purpose it was that but the reason why he's doing all of that to that person in particular it's because of the fact that it's his brother and he loves him and he wants to keep him with him so I'm not gonna deny that aspect but that was interesting to have access to all of this flashback something which is interesting it's also the fact that he wanted Deku to see all of that he talked also about the fact that Deku is not entirely with them because he's only using 20% of the quirk right now and yes for Deku to discover more about his quirk how it was created who had it to discover that it's about Personal stuff, you know, it's not just about quirks like that, something, just an idea. No, we're talking about real persons and the master, that big villain, he was someone at the beginning. He did stuff for a reason, he had a purpose, he has a background, you know, a story. So I think that, yes, these three narrative arcs, the Double Agent, Andover's Redemption arc, and Deku discovering more about his quirk, and maybe the other one, I think that these three subjects are gonna be the main narrative arcs of the season. And it was cool to discover that during the previous episode, it was a big one. For sure I'm gonna put the full reaction part for it on my Patreon. But that was also really heavy, so in a way I'm <laughs> expecting this episode that I'm gonna watch right now to be a little light, you know, like in comparison to be just fun, to to be with our students and to spend a good time with them. I really hope so. <laughs> like, we left them before the movie that I watched. It was the end of the festival. They spent a good time with every lusting and having fun. And for them it was all because after that we were with Andover, right? I think so. So let's discover where they are right now. How are they feeling also? Let's see that. If you want, you have my Patreon on which you can have four episodes of Advance. We... If you want, you have my Patreon in which you can have four episodes of Advance, meaning two weeks of Advance. It's really a lot of Advance. It's really a lot of work that I'm making, you know, to give you this advantage. So maybe it can encourage you to join me on my Patreon. I'm a little reactor on YouTube and on Patreon so each support really each little support even if it's just for one month can be appreciated can be truly useful so you have that advantage that advance you have also extended our four action part like I said for the previous episode I'm gonna put the four action part for sure and no matter what extended reaction parts are more interesting because I'm not forced to cut during the scene you know I'm really letting it go and I'm not forced to play with opacity so if you want these advantages you have my Patreon for that and also reminder not since a long time but that's it I have it I have a Twitch account I'm making some live sessions to play to some games to talk with you guys and for sure like usual I have my TikTok my Twitter and really if you and really if you can only connect you know to all of these things and to just subscribe or follow you know the really it's for free to to follow me on twitter to follow me on tiktok to follow me on twitch it's really for free but it can help me a lot you know to to be noticed by the platforms just that so if you can do it it can be appreciated let's go for this episode we're gonna see it again The meta power it's a quirk. Ah, you can show it more, but for now you can't. Just after your dream, your vision. 
女を眠らせちまえ Question is so caring. It was not really a dream, it was a vision that he gave you. He wanted to show you more. Deku? You know that picture like that? It's almost uh, the background of a villain! <laughs> Are you gonna tell him what the guy didn't show Deku? You did not? You're the chosen one! He talked directly to you, he saw you, he knows you're different. Yes, that way I think he couldn't see two people, you know, into this dream. Or my toe. I mean, All Might who didn't die and someone else. Ah, you think that at some point it's gonna. You know, one generation is gonna be like the last one. Ah, you know that he was on I think that it was because of the fact that he's not dead, so he doesn't have to survive, you know, in the queer. He's still out there. Is he your mentor? Interesting. Class A versus Class B? Ooh. Time to see which one is the best one. Ah, you have winter versions? It's darker, clearly. I think that it. Like I care about what you think! The gloves! Don't! Don't do check who! I'm not gonna remember their names. I have Kendo, that's already great, I think. The other ones. Uh, if I can remember them with their quirks, it's already gonna be great. I love you. Too much. They preferred your play? Cool! For what I remember, this one made me cry. Mm. But it means that it's gonna take the place of one of you? Yes, it was the first time. That you connected with them. Ah, 
That's why I cried for you. Because of all of them thinking that you would turn as a villain and all just because of your quirk. For people categorizing you because of your quirk. <laughs> no? Yes. He has nothing to lose. He wants a real fight. Can you take your place? Your mushroom? Ah. You have to capture them and to put them right there. It's two actions, you know, it's not that easy. <laughs> okay, let's see. For guys, that new team. Okay, Todoroki and Ida together I can make right. Bakugo, you're not with Deku. Okay, Deku is with Ochako, but with Mineta and Ashido. It's not the usual team, you know. But if it means taking the place of one of us, no. Which one? According to you? Oh! What do you want to do, Koda? Ah, that's a good idea. Okay, you're a beast. <laughs> I guess this queer, it was an easy one. What about you? Ah, you have an air queer? Not the kind that I want. You know that I'm impressed by an air wind queer. Versus class B, that's gonna be that's gonna be fun, that's gonna be cool. We're gonna have our students fighting other students and it's gonna be fun already, but it's gonna be light, you know, in comparison of the episodes that we had with the fights against the villains and stuff like that. But that's gonna be cool, that's gonna take what? Four or five episodes, something like that? It's gonna be cool. For sure, the thing which is the most interesting, important. Right there, it's not to discover the quirks of all of the students of class B, clearly. No, I'm not gonna remember their names, none of them. I'm not sure that I'm gonna even try. Like, if I manage to remember all of their quirks, just seeing them again, you know, in future episodes, if just seeing them, I can be like, okay, 
is an earthquake, it's that, it's already gonna be great, you know? So, right there, I think that the most interesting thing, it's about Chinso. Ah. I want to remember his name, see? Yes, Chinso. The fact that he's right there, that it's really important, interesting, for sure. Seeing him again right there, I remembered immediately not the fact, but really the feelings that I had during the fight and the fact that he managed to make me emotional and to make me cry also for what I remember because we had that memory about him being younger and everyone talking to him like that, like we saw again right there considering that with his quirk he could be dangerous and you know to be categorized like that as a potential villain in the future, it hurt me and after that I remember that he talked to Deku or just like that to the crowd, to himself about the fact that he wants to be an hero, he wants to be considered, he wants to be respected and he didn't have that chance, like he is not into the hero course right now but it doesn't mean that he gave up on that dream of being a hero, being useful, being considered so that's why, you know, seeing him appearing like that and we understand that seeing it that maybe he's gonna join the hero course, at least that's what he wants and that's why he's right there for this fight and maybe if he's fighting well enough he, he can join class A or class B that's so cool, that's so great, I want that for him, I already wanted that for him after that fight during the sport festival because I saw how important it was for him and how great he was and all so right there for sure I want the same but I have the impression that also into one of the past episodes they said that okay you can have people transferring from one course to another but like if it's the case it means that one of our guys or one of the guys from class B has to leave I don't want that! <laughs> I clearly don't want that because I don't want any of our guys, of our students to, to be fired, you know, to be ejected from this class and no matter what, even for class B, you know, I don't think that it's really fair but you know, just seeing that right now, I'm like, can it be possible for Mirio? Like, okay, Mirio, ah, he's not, you know, into the same gr year, you know, grade, he's older and all you know, like, Milio right now can't be into the hero course anymore. Maybe he could replace Chinso into his, into his class and Chinso could take his place. So Chinso is maybe not old enough to replace Milio, maybe he didn't learn enough. But at the same time, Chinso is said during <laughs> this episode that he's really far away, like, he's really better than all of them. That could be a perfect solution, you know? For none of our guys to be replaced, for none of the guys from class B to be replaced neither, and for Shinzo to not only have a place into the Euro course, but an amazing one, you know, by gaining some years and also by replacing Mirio. Mirio was one of the big three. It could be so good. I would want it, I would love it, but clearly maybe I'm going too far with that theory. No matter what, I'm glad that Shinso is right there. He deserves it, clearly. Earlier during the episode we had Deku talking with All Might and I'm not sure that they said something new, like something which is changing what we discovered during the previous episode, except for the fact that All Might knew all of that but not because of the first owner of the quirk telling him so he never spoke you know directly with him meaning that by talking directly with Deku he recognized Deku as someone different someone singular he said that's really great, like it can be like he's the chosen one, he's gonna be the one who is gonna manage to destroy the master, all of that, to destroy the master, all of that. But can it mean something else? 
it seems that Deku has this impression that maybe it's more about the quirk itself with the fact that the quirk is evolving with time like also all of the other ones and that's interesting that's a theory about the fact that quirks are evolving with time and that maybe at some point people are gonna be out of control because quirks are gonna evolve so much that people are not gonna be able to control them or something like that that's an interesting theory I'm wondering if it can be true or not but that's an interesting theory and because of that Deku's thought of his quirk can it be the case also for want for all can it evolve and maybe the quirk as Deku has it right now it's the last generation of it you know he talked about the doomsday of the quirk something like that okay but except for that you know all of what they talked about together was not really new I was a little surprised by Deku looking at the score like that after having that bad dream you know normally it could be a memory of a villain you know a villain origin story to have a bad dream to wake up during the night and to look at the score like that during the night it surprised me that picture you know really just the picture not the scene itself you know him running like that just after this dream that it was not a surprise for me but it was really the fact that he stopped and he looked at the scroll like that i don't know it was a little weird okay i'm gonna stop this review right now i want to have the time to watch two more episodes today so it's all for you right now on youtube remember that if you want on my patreon you can already have my reactions and my thoughts about the four next episodes if you can be interested by that it's all for you for today and it's all for me for now so bye for now bye wait a minute wait a minute doc uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine great